Why, hello there. It is JoJo Heart Attack, and these are, of course, the base logs. And today we've got our thinking caps on, because today we're gonna learn about trance music. I'm pretty sure these are the base logs. These are the base logs. And if you like music festivals, concerts, electronica, EDM, or dubstep, then you might enjoy this channel. Because on this channel, everything's fun and everything is about music. If you haven't heard trance music before, you might have an image in your head right now of a Buddhist monk sitting on top of a mountain, listening to some sort of unusual humming sound that sounds like the chillest air conditioner ever. Well, in some ways, you might be right. In this video, I plan to talk a little bit about the history of trance music and how it came about, along with the basics of what it is, and of course, some of the major artists that produce it and have produced it in the past. Anytime you're talking about a type of EDM or a type of electronica, you have to talk about beats per minute. Beats per minute, of course, being the general pace of the song to make it a little bit simpler. Trans music is 110 to 150 beats per minute. Now, if I know most of the people watching this channel are huge fans of dubstep, so just to put that into perspective, if you're not a music expert, dubstep is pretty much always at about 140 beats per minute, give or take. So, trance music tends to trend a little bit slower. That's that Buddhist monk sitting on top of a mountain listening to the world's chillest air conditioner effect. Trance music can definitely vibe you down a little bit. However, there are subgenres like Psytrance, which actually end up being a lot higher paced than dubstep is. Psytrance usually tends to range upwards of 150 beats per minute on up to 180 beats per minute. Now, you're probably sitting here thinking, where, where's trance music from? Transylvania? No. So, where did this trance music come about? You're probably thinking about the Buddhist monk on the mountain, right? Well, you could be a little bit right. Because trans music started out in the late 1980s, early 1990s. Now, it had an interesting beginning because although most people traditionally talk about trans music starting up in Eastern Europe, trans music started out and gained popularity in a state of India that I definitely can't pronounce. So I'm going to try and say... Goa, India. From Goa, India, it became relatively popular and very quickly traveled, and very quickly the genre traveled into Europe. And that is where the trance music that we know of today became very popular. In early 90s Eastern Europe, trance music became super hot in the club scene. It got crazy. I should know. I was one years old. It gives the listener a sort of a tingly feeling sometimes. At least that's how I experience it. It chills you out, but at the same time gets you going. It makes you want to dance, but it also makes you feel at ease. It's an incredible genre. And I'm glad to be learning more about it because I just became a trans fan about six months ago, and it's been an incredible learning experience. There was a time when I would have just called trance music EDM, but now I'm incredibly interested in artists like Paul Von Dyke, uh, Armin Van Buren, uh, Infected Mushroom. They're all absolutely incredible. And just to give you a little bit of a taste of what some of those artists sound like, I've got... One thing I read that kind of intrigued me and helped me understand trance music a lot more was the fact that a lot of their songs have a very slow buildup, uh, sounds as they go, which is pretty normal, followed by, of course, the 
drop, as many people call it. But at that drop point, they actually take out sounds leading off to the end of the song, which I kind of like because it gives me that build up, which is the excitement followed by the peaceful ending that I feel like I don't get from a lot of other genres and subgenres. I definitely enjoy that sort of an explosiveness followed by relaxation. And I think that's what really sets trance music apart. And what gives you that trance-like state that obviously they were thinking of when they named it. Artists you might be a little bit more familiar with in the trance music genre are artists such as Tiesto or, of course, Infected Mushroom. And I have also heard through my reading that there is some debate on whether Tipper would be considered a trance artist, being as the fact that there is a lot of crossover between subgenres and things like that in the EDM electronica community. Because, obviously, every artist is a little different, and they shouldn't be limited to a specific type just based on having a name tag. They should just enjoy producing the music they want to produce. I'd like to take a quick break from all this chill trance talk and talk about a duo of artists that have produced some pretty incredible music. Of course I'm talking about Badman. Now, I bring this up mostly because lately I've been noticing through social media and things like that that Badman is definitely moving up in the world. I mean, they've been opening for some incredible artists. I think a lot of the people watching this channel have heard of them before. And they've been traveling like crazy. And I am lucky enough to have met them and know them a little bit. And I feel like they're just going to take off before I ever get the chance to interview them, which really makes me sad. So I figured I better give them a shout out in this video. <laughs> but I am going to play a quick snippet of a Badman song, one of my favorites. Here it is. <laughs> Sorry, I of course had to post up in there some of his links to events that he will be performing at, mostly just because I didn't have any visuals to put in the background, just because I have not been able to attend one of his concerts recently, and the last concert I attended is already up on the channel, so definitely check that out. But I did include links to pretty much all of his music available on SoundCloud, so definitely check those out. And it's time for updates. I feel like I'm kind of rambling at this point. I'm really starting to hate this video, but I'm going to finish it off with some updates. I've been getting back after it at the gym. I definitely still don't feel like myself. I can do this cool peck thing. I always can do that, but... <laughs> I have been getting back into shape as were my New Year's resolution goals, which I've already gotten started on. Eating better, drinking less, being a generally better person, being on time for work, all sorts of awesome stuff that I am taking super seriously. So that is the update on that. I just got my Bass Nectar 360 ticket. I'll see if I can show it off here correctly. Oh, it looks so cool. Oh, it's, yeah, you can't, you can't do it. Okay, but I did get my Bass Nectar 360 ticket in, so I am getting ready for that. I am so excited. This New Year's is gonna be great, so stay motivated, stay wild, stay reckless, and above all, stay lit, because 2020 is gonna be a great year for you and me, because you're my bass friend. <laughs>